Recently, the show of Rema at Ethiopia has been cancelled by the Orthodox Church, and that is what we are talking about today. Welcome to this platform where we make trends make sense. Rima has been on the heat for the past four days all because of some controversial reports that has come out about his artwork, which has been in existence for a while, and I'm wondering why it's making waves at this point. Anyway, let's take a close look at it. Also, in this video, you get to get a response from Rima himself as he gets to talk about the necklace, which everyone is talking about. Let me give you some background. Rema, you know, used to be Rema. That was years ago when he was part of the Alpha Team Music Group. Of course, if you're a Christian watching me, you know what Rema means. The spoken word. After he signed on to Marvin Records with the help of the Prince. Um, I want to say big thank you for, to everybody uh, for, for supporting my sound. I want to give big shout out to the Prince for um, giving me this platform. Big shout out to Don Jazzy. And I want to say I respect everyone in this room for coming out to celebrate with me. I am the future. Rema is a young, talented Nigerian artist. Humble, I would say, to the core. When it comes to his artistry and the path he has chosen, indeed, he is making the waves. Looking at the piece of art before you, which was posted by Rema himself, you could see his evolution to whom he is right now you know for. He said he's a future. Aside his ties to Monster, Balenciaga, Come on, if you know Balenciaga, you know the conspiracies and stories about that particular brand when it comes to some kind of weird stuff about them. But looking at Rema as a subject, you can attest to the fact that his music is very unconventional. His style is way different from what is known to be the usual. And this brings us to trying to explain his art, which of course he has something to say on that. Before we get to his response to the art, let me give you a few thoughts of mine as well. Art itself is meant to be visual. And in visualizing art, you can draw in different interpretations to it based on your information. Remember, how informed you are defines how transformed you can be. So based on what you know, defines how you interpret what you see. The controversy about his necklace has been a conversation long before now. So Rema shouldn't be surprised that the people of Ethiopia looked at it differently. Just before we go on, if you have been watching me long before on this platform and you're wondering, how come George is talking about Rema or talking about something secular? Hello, I analyze trends. If you don't know where you are, ask yourself serious questions. Let's get back to the discussion. <coughs> um, okay, so um, your album cover, it's like an upside down house that's burning. What's that, uh, what's that about? How did that, you know, how did that get created? Okay. So, a lot of people had a lot of misconceptions. They said it's a church. Mm. Okay. It, it's just a church. It's not a church. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, um, when someone asked me this question, I was like, what like embodiment of me consists of a cross and a fire? It, the, whole art, the whole house actually kind of signifies me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you have this, and to the right of the house, you see the fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's literally this. Right. The fire tattoo. All right. So the fact that it's upside down is literally like my, because of like my weird and unusual approach to music. Mm -hmm. Also, the fact that, you know, everything about my career is literally like defying the laws. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we're not taking the normal route, which, yes, I was criticized for it, stuff like that. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's literally what it's all about. And if you even check the back cover of the artwork, you see inside the artwork, you have things like the time machine. Mm -hmm. And if you check the time machine, it says future, which links up back to the Hedis Award where I said I'm the future. Yeah. So literally, that house is literally like helping me. It's, it's a visual form of my message on me yeah mm. so the fact that it's upside down i've already covered that point so now mm -hmm. you understand what i'm mm. trying to yeah pass. that makes sense but i know I've, I've it's okay for people to have their misconceptions because i never i've never like done an interview about you know explaining the artwork yeah but i i did that on purpose though mm. so that people start actually paying attention 
to these pieces mm-hmm. because I we work so hard to create this artwork. Mm-hmm. We study and we think really deep and go so hard in the detailing. Right. Mm. So the fact that we we do things to catch people's attention and yeah, people are just like arguing about it. Now we finally got the attention. Yeah, because it's a lot of times people just want to do photo shoots and just drop the music. But <laughs> no, yeah. this is that I want is I want to touch every part of this artistry. I want people to tap in with every part of the artistry. So now people actually care. Mm-hmm. Now I will now care enough to start explaining them. It is important for you to know that just like many other artists, Rema grew up from singing in church. To see how the journey through this dynamic music industry. So how he transformed to the Rema you know right now explains the music business. Recently, I've been talking about the music industry when it comes to the gospel side. And right now, you see me talking about the secular side. If you're watching me and you don't know who Rema is or have never heard his song before, congratulations. But you see, you have to be aware of what is happening in the world you live in. Now, let's talk about the artwork. Look at the picture right in front of you and pay attention to details because that is what he wants you to pay attention to. First of all, you can attest that the building you see there, which he says is not a church, has a cross sign in front of it. Now, one thing you have to know is that not just regular buildings have a cross sign, or would I say the plus sign in front of it? Hmm, yeah, one plus one is two. When it comes to that particular sign itself, there are a lot of connotations to it, but let's leave it at that. So when a building has that sign in front of it, it's seen to be a religious building, let's say a church. And then what is happening as you see on the picture there is it burning from the right. If you are standing in the church, but if you are facing the church itself, it's going to be burning from the left. I am identifying it as a church for clarity. Now, if you went into a church, what are the typical things you would see in a church? Think about that for a moment. Now, let's get into the building of the art. Looking inside, normally in a church, what you should see is an altar, a pulpit, or something of that sort. And then what does he get to present inside the church? You see the list of his songs. You see Gomez right there. The next thing you see is a timing machine. And on that timing machine is written their future. Yes, that could relate with what he said on stage at the Hades that he is a future just before leaving. Now ask yourself a question. Understanding what a church setting looks like. Could that be a church? Think about it. Look on the outside there as well. You can see lovely plants as well, roses, which also goes with the rose and rave when it comes to his tags for his shows or would I say his album. But one thing I found really interesting is that on the outside, even though the church itself is upside down like you see in the art, the field itself is not upside down. The sky there is not upside down. The sky remains on the sky. If not, the sky or where we have the sun should probably be below, but it's above. If you look well again on the outside, you see people represented in skeletons. And what are they holding in their hands? Roses. When Rima gets to perform sometimes, he comes with roses and he gets to hand those over to the women who enjoy the rave with him. Think about that for a moment. These are things that he's been portraying over time when he goes out to perform. He even goes there with skeletons. And you ask yourself a question, what would that even mean if you are thinking analytically of what he might be trying to portray with his artwork? Note, it's an artifact, so you have to pay attention to details. What do I think? I think those skeletons there represent human beings. And the idea could be the unending loss for you to love his music till your death. And even while you are in death, you still love his music. It's more of like, um, listen to me till you die. Interesting, I would say. Right interpretation? You could tell me in the comments. Listening to him speak about that and him saying emphatically that or saying that that particular artwork is so is not a church. He depicted and explained the artwork with respect to himself. I had to look at his own tattoos and as well. Remember, the tattoos were there before the artwork came. So that means there's a correlation right there. If he's indeed more of like a devil worshipper, like people say, with the cross being upside down, probably the cross that is on his chest should also be upside down because that one looks like a perfect 
depiction of, uh, I would say, Jesus being crucified. Think about that. So if he is saying that that particular building represents himself, the cross there representing the one he has on his chest, as well looking at the fire representing what he has on his right hand, it makes sense, or does it not? On the outside there will represent every other person that is there at his concert or people that are listening to his music anyway, anyhow. Now listen, when it comes to this world, even the Bible itself talks about it that, you know, there are some things that you have to leave this world for you not to even be aware of them, I would say. Whether you like it or not, some way, somehow, that particular sound and calm down has gotten into your ear streams. Has appeared on your feed some way, somehow. Except you don't use social media or you have never watched TV in your life. Congratulations. Anyway, you just knew about it right now from this video. Sorry. What point am I trying to make right here? Symbolisms are important. You see, if you look at this video of a goat hanging the same necklace, what depiction does that give you? Oh yes, Baphomet. Think about that. So it's clear why people are going to draw conclusions as to the fact that probably he's into something interesting. Probably he's not. But look at his background, look at those who are more of like put charge over him. The prince, do you think he's someone into that? Don Jazzy himself, who is more of like a godfather to him as well as many others who are under his level. Think about that for a moment. Is there something we are not seeing here? Because if he is being tagged as this or that, Ethiopians, of course, you don't know who Rema is, like Nigerians who know him and how he came about, and who Don Daji is as well. Of course. So, I know many Ethiopians would probably be watching this video and trying to validate their claims that Rema himself is a devil worshiper or something. But let me ask you people a question. Anyone, when you listen to secular music, music that are not quote-unquote gospel, if a whole group in a country that are seen to be custodians of the country when it comes to its religious aspects is becoming worrisome. The reason is because the listeners of these artists, secular, canal, or whatever genre, most of them are you and I watching. Christians, Muslims, whatever religion you belong to, because as human beings, you listen to what you want to listen to. Of course, come on. We have seen you on this platform where worldly music, like you would call it, or secular music, are being refixed, of course. And with new lyrics, of course, with a reference point of a sound and beats coming from the music that everyone knows and that played in church with Christian lyrics. And you ask yourself a question, how did the people that create the Christian songs get to know about the song? Who are they listening to for them to get the same sound using the same beats, but to refix it for the Christian community? Think about that for a moment. So in one way or the other, the influence of what is in the waves gets to everyone. But has a church guarded itself so much to prevent the infiltration of that which is in the waves into the church. I can't say that for the Nigerian church, I would say. But of course, what the people of Ethiopia are doing might make me want to look at the country closer to see if there's a sense of hypocrisy right here. Because I would be assuming in my mind that Ethiopia has no secular artist, except for this depiction of the artwork that shows an evident act, according to Ethiopians, that he is a devil worshipper, then I would understand. But do you know that there are many devil worshippers who are not very pronounced about their allegiance? And I'm, I, I am reminded of this scripture that talks about Christians who judge unbelievers. And I get to wonder to myself, do Christians do the right thing when they judge unbelievers? Think about that for a moment as well. But again, I would understand the fact that because Christians are the patronizers, because Christians are the consumers, 
of all of this that comes out on social media or would I say any genre of music, it's important that some leaders in different sects speak against what they feel is an infiltration into the people or the minds of the sect they belong to, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist or whatever.